Hi, my name is Shen, and today I'm going to show you my filming setup. Now, just a disclaimer, if you are a small business starting out, then you absolutely do not need all of this equipment. Your phone will do just fine, and it's what I used for the longest time as well, even when I had a decent camera. Most Samsungs and iPhones do actually have pretty phenomenal cameras and will get you by just fine, especially in the starting stages. But once you're looking to upgrade to a professional setup, I'm going to show you what I have, and this is what I recommend to get. Now let's get onto the gear, and like most things, I tend to go all out, so there is a lot of gear. So first up is the camera. Um, this is by far one of the best investments I've made in the business, and I chose to get the Canon M50 Mark II mirrorless camera. It comes with the 15 to 45 millimeter lens. It has a 24.1 CMOS sensor, and will take video in 4K. I chose this camera for two reasons. One, that it does have the 4K capability, and it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which makes everything a million times easier because I can just throw my photos and videos onto my iPad, onto my phone, without having to go turn on my computer and plug an SD card into it. This camera will set you back about $700, but for a mirrorless camera, it's one of the best in the starter price range that you can get. So I upgraded from a Canon T5, which meant I went from a regular camera to a mirrorless camera. One of the biggest challenges with that for most people tends to be the lenses. If you bought a whole set of lenses for your old camera, going mirrorless means they are now useless, unless you get a lens adapter goes from an EF lens mount to an EFM for the mirrorless, so the previous lenses that I bought from my old camera actually still work. And this little piece of equipment will set you back about $200 as well. But if you have a lot of lenses, it might be worth the investment. And the reason I bought that lens adapter was to continue using my 50 millimeter. So I bought this for my Canon T5. This worked great for those close-up shots, self-portraits, and product photography and I did not want to have to buy another 50 millimeter lens, which would be a lot more expensive. And the last thing lens-wise was my macro lens. I ended up picking up a 28 millimeter macro lens. I picked this up a few months after getting my camera, so once I've gotten used to uh, the lenses I did have, I decided I want to get a macro. Uh, mostly for product photography, this is great to get very detailed close-up shots, especially since I make jewelry. That's why I really needed one. And it does have a light on it too. So when you are very close up, taking like a true macro shot, you can actually illuminate the image. In this lens, I had to actually physically almost hunt it down because it was sold out everywhere in stores. Uh, you couldn't find it, much like many items these days. So this lens is perfect for capturing all those close-up details, any kind of tiny product like jewelry, anything that you're trying to get very close detailed shots of. This is a lens I would highly recommend. Um, you're looking at about $300 to pick this up. So I figured if I'm going all out, I might as well do it properly and get a real microphone for my camera. After doing a whole bunch of research, I settled on the Rode Video Mic Go, which was only $90, but it is the perfect starter mic. I would definitely recommend this. It does exactly what I needed to. It has a great sound quality. I'm glad I didn't blow the money on an even more professional mic because there'd be no need for it. At this stage, the Rode Video Mic Go is perfect for what it is. For anyone who has a starter setup or is just getting into YouTube and filming or just wants something simple for their small business or for voiceovers, the Video Mic Go is definitely one of the routes to go with. Now, a piece of gear that I probably really didn't need at the very beginning, but I decided to go all out, splurge, and get it, was the DJI Ronin SC2. This is my gimbal, and probably, apart from the camera, one of my favorite pieces I've bought to date. It just snaps together super easily. It folds up for storage. It has a whole bunch of controls here. So in the past, I bought a few phone gimbals, and they were okay and kind of cool, but I ended up returning them because I was planning to get a true camera gimbal. And this was something that was on my list for a while to get, and when I was getting the cameras, I did why not just pick this up as well. This is probably one of the most useful piece of gear that I've gotten so far. So the DJI Ronin SC2 will set you back by about $500, so it's a little pricey for a gimbal, and when getting a gimbal, there is a pretty huge learning curve. So there are a ton of YouTube tutorials and resources, and that's where I learned a lot of the different tips and tricks, and you can kind of see me using the gimbal in the video by the way the shots go. I also picked up a hard case, a hard traveling case, for my gimbal, so if I am on the go, I can just throw it right in the case, and I don't have to worry about it getting damaged. Um, it's quite an expensive piece of equipment, so I just want to make sure it's protected. I think the case is about 30 bucks off of Amazon. So not too bad at all. One piece of equipment I picked up that is 100% necessary, especially for me, is this little Canon B7 
BRE1 remote. This is a remote shutter and without this I would not be able to do what I do. Um, this is how I take all my Instagram photos. So I do a lot of self portraits and this little remote is what really lets me be able to take those photos. Just me, camera, tripod, and the remote. There's no photographer. I don't have a photographer. I am the photographer. Another super necessary piece of equipment um, is extra batteries. I 100% recommend getting extra batteries. I got two batteries. These are a little bit of an off-brand battery, but they're made for the Canon M50 with a dual battery charger. Um, you will not regret getting extra batteries. Trust me, they will make your life easier because when you're filming or in the middle of a project and the batteries die, you need a backup. Just remember to charge them. Don't do what I do. Don't forget to charge them. And then the battery dies and then you gotta go wait for the batteries to all charge. And one random piece of equipment I picked up was a little SD card case. Kind of useful. Throw, throw all your SD cards in there and it just kind of keeps them safe because you know the little buggers are tiny and get lost super easily. Now the next uh, set of gear that I have is lights. So every content creator, filmer, videographer, photographer, we're gonna need some kind of lights. One of the first things I picked up was a ring light. I think pretty much every content creator has one at this point in some form. I picked up a Sunpack ring light. It is a 12 inch ring light. This one's a little older now, so it's a little bulkier. We got it a few years ago. Now there's some newer ones that are real tiny and portable and you just collapse them into a base. But for now, mine does the job. Eventually I'll get a smaller one. I also picked up some smaller lights as well. This is a DigiPower light uh, called the Streamer. It is 112 LEDs. It goes from cool to warm in white light only, and it's portable. You just charge it up. It runs for about an hour and a half, depending on what kind of brightness you have it set at. Now, uh, this one's quite small. Um, this will run about $60 at your local tech store. And this one's great for uh, product photography, adding a little bit of ambient light to your filming. I also picked up an RGB light. Um, this is the larger DigiPower RGB. This one has 256 LEDs. It will go for about two and a half hours depending on the brightness I have it set at. I tend to also still use this for product photography and kind of fixing uh, the light a little bit with the colors. It also is used as an ambient background light a lot too. So I've been using this one for a few years. As you can see it has some stickers on it at this point. It's been very reliable and probably one of my favorite lights I've gotten so far. Now onto the tripods. Um, I've had several of them and right now my favorite is the Joby Range Pod. That is currently what my camera is sitting on. So far the Joby Range Pod has been one of the best tripods I've gotten. It is super sturdy. It does not bend, doesn't move. Um, it actually has a hook that you can put weight on it if you have to stabilize it more. Um, and it can hold up to a 17 pound camera. So when my lens adapter and 50 millimeter lens are on. That does make my camera very front heavy and it easily holds that up. The Joby range pod goes for about $150. So it's a little pricier when it comes to tripods. If you're starting out, you probably don't need to spend that much money on something like that. And then another Joby accessory that I didn't know I needed was the Joby Vert. This is a vertical mount. This will attach right onto the tripod. Now the tripod itself can go vertical, but depending on the accessories I have on my camera, sometimes it's easier just to use the mount. Also, my other tripods that don't have the ability to go vertical, I can use the Joe Weaver. And this is great whenever I'm filming anything for social media, such as Instagram Reels or TikToks. And then I got another piece of equipment that was actually a TikTok recommendation. This was recommended by a content creator on there. It is the LS04 flexible arm. And this just attaches to your tripod um, and it attaches horizontally so you can actually film something directly overhead. When I am filming anywhere making of videos now, the last one I think I filmed that way was the treasure chest. That one I used the arm to film directly above and then I was able to get a couple different viewing angles because now I can do from the sides, above, angle down, all different things with it. The flexible arm comes with two pieces and despite my camera being slightly heavy, not too heavy. It holds it up no problem. I have a giant tripod and I also needed a tiny one. I want to get a little tiny tabletop one, one that I can just kind of hold in my hand if I'm using it, using my camera while walking. I got the Manfrotto Pixie Evo. So they have two Manfrotto Pixies. The first Manfrotto Pixie doesn't have extendable legs. I have the Evo which the legs will adjust so it will expand up and down. This is super useful because this can actually splay all the way out and be a true tabletop. For a little tripod this one is a bit pricey at $42 but felt it was worth it for what I use it for. I like the 
ability to kind of extend the legs and make it taller or shorter if I want to. Although there are plenty of tiny tripods you can get that will set you back only about maybe $10 instead of $40. And then for the tripod that I think every person has, because this one is super affordable um, and super common. This is the Sunpak 4200XL. This is my medium tripod. This one I tend to use with the DigiPad Relates to set it up. I think I bought this tripod probably about six or seven years ago. Um, at Best Buy. Back then it was about $10 to $15, but due to inflation it is now $30. I just checked the price today. This is a great medium-sized tripod. It only goes up to 42 inches tall, so you don't want anything too tall. Otherwise get yourself a bigger tripod. And the last piece of equipment I have is my camera backpack. So I got the Platinum Street Tech Pro 300. Um, this is a super roomy backpack. It has tons of little storages, um, has lots of little compartments, so it's perfect for someone who has a lot of different like lenses, microphones, um, even mini tripods will fit in there, my lights. It carries all of my gear easily and has a spot for my iPad or a small laptop. And then even has a bottom compartment where I kind of use to store gear that I don't use as often, like a ring flash that I have and some other little miscellaneous pieces. So that's basically my entire filming and camera setup. I did splurge a little bit on that, but it has been wonderful. If you found this video helpful and you have any of this equipment, let me know how you like it or drop your setup down below. I'm kind of curious to find out what everybody else uses. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, help a little channel out. I'll see you next time.